My dad was killed um, over 25 years ago in a side underride crash in North Carolina. And my dad came through the curb and he was in a jackknife position with the trailer blocking both lanes of highway and he hit the side of it, went all the way under it and came out 41 feet on the other side. Our son Jeff, who was 17 at the time, and his four friends were on their way to a haunted hayride. Uh, they pulled into the breakdown lane on the main turnpike. A Walmart truck driver fell asleep at the wheel and ran over the top of the car, killing four of them. They were 14, 15, 16, and 17. My son, of 19 years, had just started his freshman year at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Traffic had stopped on the interstate, and Orby stopped behind a semi-truck was waiting for the highway to be cleared and another truck hit him from behind going 75 miles an hour. His car burned and in an instant my life was changed. On his way to the airport the 23rd of December to catch a flight to fly from Alabama up to New Jersey, he was rear-ended by a semi-truck and killed instantly. Dad was rear-ended and pushed into the semi-truck in front of him. And when it all came to a stop, the driver jumped out of his truck and said, I'm sorry, I was asleep. And uh, they tried to revive Dad, but he was gone instantly. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in Danger on the Road, Truck Driver Fatigue, to investigate this deadly serious problem responsible for thousands of deaths per year, and how the government's safety advocates are working together on a national and state levels of government to reduce this serious problem. The Insider Exclusive analyzed five years of federal crash data. We added up the fatalities county by county, road by road during that entire period. And we found that between 3,500 and 5,000 people are killed in truck crashes on our nation's highways every year. Although that's the equivalent of a commercial airplane crash occurring every week, there is a general lack of awareness on the part of the motoring public about this problem. Estimates suggest that fatigue is a major factor in up to 30% of fatal crashes and 15% of serious injury crashes. Fatigue also contributes to approximately 25% of insurance losses in the heavy vehicle industry. Driver fatigue is particularly dangerous because one of the symptoms is a decreased ability to judge one's own level of tiredness. Research has shown that not sleeping for more than 17 hours has an effect on driving ability, the equivalent of a blood alcohol concentration of 0.05. Not sleeping for 24 hours has the same effect of having a blood alcohol concentration of 0.10. In the best of conditions, tractor trailers are dangerous vehicles simply due to their size and weight. The average semi can carry more than 40,000 pounds of cargo, let alone the mass of the truck, fuel, and the trailer. The average passenger vehicle, on the other hand, weighs only 4,000 pounds, a deadly match in any collision. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is in charge of regulating the commercial trucking industry, including how many hours truck drivers are permitted to operate their vehicles within any given day and week. The Code of Federal Regulations 49 CFR 392 contains mandatory rules regarding fatigue and impairment. Under present federal hours of service regulations, commercial truck drivers are required to follow the 11 hour and 60 70 rules. The 11 hour rule is that truck drivers may not drive more than 11 hours within a 14 hour period, followed by 10 hours off duty. The 60 70 rule is truck drivers may spend no more than a total of 60 hours on duty within any seven day period or 70 hours on duty within any eight day period. A new seven or eight day period does not begin until the truck driver has spent at least 34 hours off duty. In this insider exclusive investigative TV special, we interview safety advocates, including Joan Claybrook, Public Citizens Chair Emeritus, Chair of Citizens for Reliable and Safe Highways, and former head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the Carter Administration, as well as Daphne Iser, co-founder and co-chair, 
Parents Against Tired Truckers, and Jennifer Tierney and Don King, board members of CRASH, who dedicate their time and energy to reducing the number of deaths and injuries caused by truck-related crashes and working on issues that are of importance to improve truck safety like This trucking safety crisis is a direct result of government deregulation in 1980 and a super competitive industry with many companies willing to cut corners. Fierce competition with shippers frequently have unrealistic demands. Responsible trucking companies also want improvements in safety. The government's mistaken rationale for deregulation was that fewer and simpler regulations would lead to a raised level of competition, therefore higher productivity, more efficiency, and overall lower prices. One nationally prominent law firm, Dollar Burns and Becker, has been for years reaching out to some of the more responsible motor carriers to identify issues on which they can work together. Two of their partners, Tim Dollar and Jeff Burns, have become not only extraordinary advocates for safety on our highways, but also have become some of the most sought after trial lawyers in catastrophic crashes involving trucks. As a result of historic cooperation between safety advocates and law firms like Dollar Burns and Becker, during the 2012 legislative session, a bill requiring electronic onboard recording devices to make it harder for drivers to falsify their logs and drive longer than allowed was finally passed. In every truck crash case that Dollar Burns and Becker represents, they attempt to require the trucking company to do more than just pay money. They attempt to identify the issue that caused the particular crash in question and require the company to take steps to improve that aspect of safety within the company. The result of almost 20 years of pushing for improved safety in the trucking industry and representing truck crash victims in 34 states is that the law firm of Dollar, Burns & Becker provides compassionate representation for truck crash victims and achieves maximum recovery while also working for maximum reduction of similar crashes in the future. Tim Dollar and Jeff Burns have earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as some of the best trial lawyers in Kansas City, in Missouri, and in the nation. Their amazing courtroom skills and success rate continue to provide their clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Washington, D.C. It's my great pleasure to introduce Tim Dollar and Jeff Burns to the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Tell our audience a little bit about your firm. What type of law do you practice? We're a trial practice law firm that focuses our practice on representing victims of catastrophic injuries, including those that involve serious injury or death from truck crash cases. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeff, you have kind of a particular specialty, don't you? For the past 20 years, uh, I've been focusing my practice on truck crash, uh, mm -hmm. truck crashes and assisting truck crash victims. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to not only maximize their recovery in a lawsuit, but to help them through probably the worst time in their life. Mm -hmm. um, today we are focusing on one aspect of truck crashes, and that's driver fatigue. What should our audience know about truck driver fatigue and the main issues? Your audience should know that as they're driving down the interstate, on average, one out of five trucks that they pass has a driver who has been too long at the wheel or is fatigued or sleep deprived or has a sleep disorder that interrupts his sleep so that it's a potential danger for them to be driving next to that vehicle. 
Um, when you have, when you're sleep deprived, it is the equivalent of almost being, uh, having a blood alcohol consumption level of sometimes twice the speed, uh, legal limit, right? That's, that's true. There is a direct correlation between impairment due to fatigue and impairment due to alcohol. So uh, the, the difference is though when a, a, a driver's uh, ability to perceive and react is impaired by alcohol, but when a driver finally goes to sleep, he has no perception and no reaction. So, so in, in many ways, a drunk driver is potentially safer than a, than a sleepy driver. And, and these drivers are the worst judges of themselves, right, to pull themselves off the road, correct? There hasn't been enough training mm -hmm. out in the, in the field. The, the, the industry has, has pushed back a, against owning the, owner, the issue of fatigue, except for some very responsible trucking companies. Yeah. They're leading the pack in screening for sleep apnea, mm -hmm. in f fatigue management training, and telling drivers, here's how to not just follow the hours of service regulations, but here's how to manage your life so you don't kill somebody on the road. Right, in the many years that we've been doing these shows, there's always like one case that motivates a lawyer to decide to focus and concentrate on that industry or those type of cases. And I think you had a case like that, Jerry Ferguson. Can, the, case, can, the case that got me into, uh, interested in truck driver fatigue and yeah. really woke me up to the issue of truck driver fatigue mm -hmm. was that Jerry Ferguson lost his wife and two daughters, ages six and nine, back in the early 90s, almost 20 years ago. I didn't know anything about driver fatigue before I handled that case. And the more I learned, the more afraid I got. My daughter, who's now married and has her own child, uh, was at the same age as one of the daughters of Jerry who was killed. And I kept seeing her picture when I was working on that case. I kept seeing her in my mind and realized that this could have been me that, who lost my wife and children. Uh, and it really scared me. Uh, and I went out to the scene with these girls' grandfather, and we found some things, and we took them back. And we knelt out there in the, in the weeds where the truck crash happened, and uh, we said a little prayer. And I committed myself at that point to try to do something about this, to try to save lives and to have this happen have this not happen to other families. Mm -hmm. uh, to this day, I keep a pair of roller skates that we found in my office to remind me that we're not just handling a lawsuit, we're dealing with people's lives. And I wanted to talk to you about that because you are more than lawyers, you're also advocates uh, to change, to improve safety on the highways, aren't you? Which is, which is kind of rare in a way, isn't it? Well. I mean, you want more than just getting the right kind of legal settlement, the right kind of money settlement. You want to see something done about preventing it in the future. It's one of the things that I am maybe most proud of. If we're sincere in what we are, are engaged in, in bringing lawsuits, the real purpose of engaging in that activity other than to provide accountability and compensation in that case for that family is to change behavior mm -hmm. and I'm convicted to my core that doing the work that we do does change behavior and if you look over the history of our years together you'll find large monetary results and you'll find large verdicts or resolutions of cases that did bring uh, comfort and and did really good work Mm -hmm. uh, by way of compensating a family. But you'll also find, as a part of the resolution of those cases, time and time and time again, some of the largest trucking companies in this country agreeing to make significant and substantial changes in their policies mm -hmm. that result in better training, in better drivers, in better supervision, that, that end up saving lives. The truth of the matter is, our real focus is to work ourselves out of a job. Right. To make sure that by bringing these cases and holding them accountable, we can 
we can reduce the number of crashes so that we don't have any more work to do. When you get these kinds of changes, a company says, I'm, we are going to do the following, okay? We're, we're going to try to prevent this in the future. Do you do any follow-up? How do you know they actually do this? We've been involved in cases mm -hmm. where uh, we've asked them to change a particular policy or to institute a fatigue training program. Yeah. And then we'll be back a couple of years later on some related issue or some other matter. And as a part of the discovery in that case, we're able to obtain those documents and learn and prove yeah. that they, in fact, uh, did that. And did or didn't? Do they it. did do it yeah. in most cases, and in some cases, um, you know, we we have the ability to have them uh, agree mm -hmm. that they will prove to us uh, by policy change or otherwise b by providing the documents that indicates that they've done what we've asked them to do. Mm -hmm. There are two other cases that you provided us with that were trucking cases, significant cases. One of them was Don King's case and Ed Slattery's case. Can you tell our audience a little bit about the facts of each one of those cases and what was the result of it? Don King's father was a man named Bill Badger. On Christmas Eve, he was driving from his home to Atlanta to, be, to, to fly to visit one of his daughters for Christmas. His wife had died the previous year, so the children weren't coming home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he was going to visit one of his daughters. On the way to the airport, he, he was rear-ended and killed by a, a, a tired trucker. Um, that case uh, happened to be with a very responsible trucking company. Uh, and they, they came to us and said, okay, uh, we, we want to do the right thing, we want to resolve this, help us in, dis in, in uh, telling the story. Mm -hmm. And so to this day, that trucking company, the vice president of safety of that trucking company tells the Bill Badger story right. to its driver trainees. Um, he, that, that vice president of safety keeps a picture of, of Mr. Badger on his desk. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder that training isn't just a watchword in the industry. It's not just something you say. Mm -hmm. You do it or people die. So that must have made you feel real good about that particular case. The family, whenever someone loses a family member, yeah. they're not interested as much in the, in the monetary compensation. Mm -hmm. This family was driven by wanting to make a difference, wanting to make a change in the industry. And, and, and that case did result in some very significant changes. Yeah, we later on we're going to have Ed Slattery on the show with you talking a little bit about the case. But um, right now, what I want to talk about is some of the legal strategies that your firm follows to successfully either settle or prosecute uh, cases like that. Well, one of the most important things in these cases is to gather and preserve evidence as soon as it is possible after the crash. Most trucking companies have go teams that uh, are on the scene sometimes in cases we found on the scene before bodies are removed from the vehicles. And I will bet you some of them destroy evidence. They're not looking for evidence to help the claimants, yeah. let's put it that yeah. way. So we also have uh, teams of folks available to go out and to help us preserve evidence yeah. in order to uh, make sure that markings on the roadway, that physical evidence in terms of debris and debris fields is protected and photographed and preserved. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's one of the most important things. And it's difficult because in many cases these victims either injured themselves or family members who they've lost there in the process of grieving and the last thing they're thinking about at that point is that sort of that sort of issue. Right. Uh, but nevertheless, it's important so that later when they've um, sort of got their senses about them, they can adequately proceed and uh, be able to uh, hold folks accountable. And then the second part of that is just the commitment to handling every case as though you are going to try the case and with a team that has tried 
many, many, many jury trials. Right. Too many folks are involved in cases where lawyers just get in it for an early settlement so that they can then uh, resolve the case and move on. Cases settle, for sure, but they settle in the range that they should settle and resolve for the right reason and with all of the other things that we're able to get for one reason, mm -hmm. which is you were there, preserve the evidence, and are ready for trial. Right. I think it's important to bring out, even though you are based out of Kansas City, you operate and practice law. You've handled cases in 34 states, haven't you? These crashes happen all over the country. Yeah. The interstate, and most of them involve people from many different states. So being in Kansas City, we're centrally located, and mm -hmm. we can be to the, to the scene of a crash uh, within a, a, a few hours if necessary. You, do you send out a team of investigators? Is that what you do? We have investigators, accident reconstructionists, right. and ourselves, okay. because it's important that the lawyers be on the scene themselves. It's one thing to receive a report about what's on the scene, but it's another thing, as Jeff mentioned, to actually be kicking in the weeds yourself so yeah. that you are able to later explain appropriately to a jury the magnitude of the loss. Yeah. We have with us today um, two well-known safety advocates, Joan Claybrook and Jennifer Tierney, who we're going to bring on the show right now to talk a little bit more about driver fatigue. So let's do that right now. It is my great pleasure to introduce Joan Claybrook and Jennifer Tierney to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you. For our audience, tell our audience a little bit about your background as being an advocate for safety. Well, I've regulated the auto industry. Uh, I've worked uh, with uh, Ralph Nader for many years uh, in a public interest organization as an advocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, most of my life, I've worked on auto and uh, truck safety issues. What about yourself, Jennifer? Um, I'm from North Carolina, and my dad was killed in a horrific crash with a large truck um, almost 30 years ago. And I've been very active in trying to prevent those crashes from happening to others. Mm -hmm. Today, we're talking on this show about a big problem, which is driver fatigue. Tell our audience a little bit about some of the issues, Joan. Truck drivers are required by their companies to drive far too long, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they often get tired, and then they have crashes. Mm -hmm. And the rules need to be changed, and the trucking industry has fought that for years and years. Um, when uh, truckers get tired, they um, fall asleep. And uh, because the trucks are so big, they run over the other vehicles on the highway. So the yes. people who are really injured almost all the time are the people in cars. Mm -hmm. And you have a, uh, a personal involvement on this, is why you came into this industry as an advocate to begin with, right? Absolutely. I was just a person living my life and just thought trucks were an aspect of our highways and didn't put a lot of thought into it until my dad was killed in a horrific crash almost 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I have worked since that time to um, try to keep this from happening to someone else. And um, I know firsthand that when this first happens, you're hardly able to function. The shock and the trauma that you feel is more than anything that you can compare to. There's nothing that would compare to it. And a lot of times you don't know what to do and how to do. And while we're trying to bury our loved ones or take care of injured loved ones, um, you know, the trucking companies are going about you know, they're trying to determine what happened in the accident, who did what, and that's something that, an aspect that you're not even thinking of at that point. And so I feel that it's absolutely crucial that you get legal help and you get experienced legal help immediately, because if you wait too long, then evidence, records, things can be destroyed. And, um, you know, you have to have someone that knows what they're doing. And, and with with uh, Jeff and, and his law firm and his partners, they have done their part. I have worked alongside Jeff for many, many, many years. He has worked tirelessly for this cause and to try to keep what he's seen happen to our families from happening to anybody else. If anybody that I knew or anybody that I love was ever involved in a truck crash again, the first phone call I would be make would be to Jeff and his partners. Mm -hmm. And you know Jeff well, don't you? I've known Jeff for over 20 years uh, because we've worked on truck safety and particularly driver fatigue together. Mm -hmm. And he has been um, at every meeting that you can possibly imagine with the Secretary of Transportation and mm -hmm. key members of Congress and key staff. He comes uh, to Washington from Kansas City all the time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know how he has the energy to do that. 
Uh, but the, the key uh, issue about Jeff Burns to me is that he wants to stop the kinds of crashes that harm people, even though those kinds of crashes are, are the ones that bring him clients. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, he's advocating against his own self-interest right. by being a consumer advocate for truck safety and for reducing uh, driver fatigue. Currently, there's some legislation in Congress right now to improve the safety on the highways. What is that, and how can the public, do, how can the public help get that passed? Well, actually, it's in the Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. So right now, there is uh, decisions uh, going on in the Department of Transportation on driver fatigue. It's called a rulemaking. A and uh, we're very uh, angry that um, the uh, Department of Transportation, since the uh, late 1990s, has uh, found that they do not have to improve uh, the rules for driver fatigue. And so we've sued. Uh, we've sued the Department of Transportation, and uh, we have some volunteer lawyers who are doing this work for us, mm -hmm. and uh, part of them from Public Citizen. And so we're, we're hoping that we can overturn this decision and force the Department of Transportation. It's the fourth time that we've had to sue them on this one particular issue. The three other times, what happened? Uh, we won. We won in every case in the U.S. Federal Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, the, the key uh, court just below the Supreme Court mm -hmm. for, for decisions on issues like this. And the department goes back and they reissue the same old rule with a little tiny change to it. And so it's like uh, we're meeting the Department of Transportation and the trucking industry together uh, opposing us in trying to push for driver fatigue mm -hmm. uh, changes. And you're very active in making sure this gets passed too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the one thing that we can do to honor our loved ones. It's the only thing that we can do at this point is to honor our loved ones. Mm -hmm. And um, I just feel that at this time you need someone, you need people around you that will help you. Ne you need attorneys that understand the process, that know what they're doing, and you need them to be compassionate. And Jeff Burns is the most compassionate man I've ever seen. I have shed many a tear with him and other victims and survivors over what has happened to our families on our highways because of such big, large trucks being driven by tired truck drivers. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank both of you for spending time with us on our show today. We have some other very active people that we're going to have on this show, advocates, uh, Daphne Iser and Don King, and we're going to bring them on right now. It's my great pleasure to introduce Daphne Iser and Don King. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell our audience a little bit about the advocacy that you are involved with. Um, we are involved, well, we started Parents Against Tired Truckers after our son was killed by a tired trucker. Yeah. And uh, we have learned that fatigue is a major problem in the trucking industry. Right. Um, it came out the top issue in 1996 at the first National Truck and Bus Safety Summit. Mm -hmm. And it's still a big problem. Top of the list. Still at the top of the list. Now, Don, you're a board member on CRASH, mm -hmm. right? I'm a board member. And CRASH, how do you guys address this big problem of driver well, fatigue? Fatigue is huge. It's the reason my dad was killed mm -hmm. early in the morning, uh, was rear-ended by a semi-driver that fell asleep. And so one of the things that we're working on is trying, and we have just successfully uh, had electronic onboard recorders mandated. I gotta ask you, does this apply to all trucks? All commercial trucks that all are under trucks. the hours of service rules. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And this was a huge thing for my family because that's the reason the dad was killed, was he was running long. Yeah, now these are electronic onboard recorders. Uh, what if a trucking company, t what if they don't have the money to Install They're them. not expensive. They're not expensive. So, no. How they're much are they? I'm just curious. I'm not a, Not expensive though. Not expensive. But once they're mandated, the price will go down because there'll be so many so But it is the law. Mm -hmm. It is the it law. Was, it was passed. That was a tremendous this, achievement. That was it was a, a huge goal. Yeah. We've big. talked about this before. You're not an anti trucking organization because the truckers and you in a way are on the same team. Mm -hmm. We want everybody to be safe. Because a lot of these guys are overworked. A lot of them don't have places to sleep, correct? Right. And uh, so it is the companies that are driving them. Exactly. You know, forcing them yeah. to work longer hours. And many of them are paid by the mile. So more miles, more money. Yeah. So here's my question. What is being done 
against the companies so that they are penalized for forcing drivers to work like slaves. Well, there are sa there's the safety agencies yeah. are are monitoring that, keeping records, and handling mm -hmm. the penalty part of it. Our goal is just keeping everybody everybody safe on the road and providing that support. It's mm -hmm. not our goal to to charge companies for any yeah. of that. Well, you guys are doing a tremendous job, and keep up the good work. And thank you very much for joining us on our show. It's my great pleasure to introduce Jeff Burns again and Ed Slattery. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ed, my condolences to you for the loss that you suffered in your family. Tell our audience a little bit about what happened two years ago in this trucking accident. Uh, two years ago, August 16th, 2010, my wife and two sons were returning from Ohio, um, a family um, reunion. I was at work because I had just had shoulder surgery. Um, and so I didn't travel with them. And it was a perfectly clear, sunny day at a, about 11.45 in the morning. My wife was merging into traffic at a construction site and a truck driver fell asleep at the wheel um, and rear-ended her. He was going 55 miles an hour and she was going about eight and pushed her car up underneath a tractor trailer that was in front of her and she was killed pretty much instantly. Um, my youngest son suffered a traumatic brain injury uh, and is permanently disabled. And my 16-year-old suffered crushed pelvis and some, um, some facial fractures. Today we have your lawyer, Jeff, with us. Walk us through how you ended up meeting Jeff uh, and having him represent you in this case. My daughter had done some research on um, truck accident attorneys and she came up with um, Jeff and Tim's um, information and so she called them. Jeff and Tim flew straight out um, with a videographer, I believe, um, who did some accident investigation of the accident scene in the vehicle. This is a result of the phone call, your firm, flew out with your team of guys, right? Correct. Started investigating this, this accident so that you could help him. Now, tell us, Jeff, what happened with this case. This case was clearly a horrible, tragic case because we didn't know if Matthew would ever come out of a coma at that mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. um, and Ed's wife was killed. Uh, it was, it was uh, many other people were injured in the, in the crash. We had a prior case with the particular company involved and we, we knew the people and so we contacted them directly mm -hmm. and, and said this could go two ways. You, it went the other way in the prior one. Do we have to prove to you in this case that, mm -hmm. we, that we, we mean what we say? Mm -hmm. They asked us if, if we would go into mediation. We headed into mediation but we knew that they were never going to, to pay what they had to pay in this case unless we were prepared for trial. So we treated the case as though it was filed and we did the re crash reconstruction. We did witness interviews all over the country because this crash happened on an interstate. Yeah. And so people are going home and coming to and crossing the country. So we tra tra trailed and tracked everybody down, went out and took their video statements. We had a reconstruction due. We demanded that was the other issue. Yeah. The company had to provide us all the documents that we would normally get in discovery. So that when, by the time we went into mediation, we were literally prepared for trial and we put on a demonstration about how prepared we were. And it ended up taking uh, uh, three days of mediation. First, we had a, a first mediation that did not result in a, in a resolution mm -hmm. and we had to go back uh, and, and do another one and finally uh, they, they ended up uh, paying what, what, would, what it was going to cost Ed to take care of the family. And, and that was in the neighborhood of what, about 40 million? They paid 40.8 million dollars. Yeah. And, uh, but, but as, as so many people will tell you, this case wasn't just about the right. money. It was it about was change too. About holding people accountable yeah. and making a difference in the industry. These cases, Jeff, are very expensive to litigate, aren't they? They certainly are, to do it correctly. 
um, when, when we, as I mentioned earlier, we prepare every case as though it's going to go to trial. I mean, they can run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Before you get to the point of trial, you can spend three and a half, three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. The reconstruction alone that we prepared for the mediation cost over fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, the reason I'm bringing this up is there's a lot of lawyers out there who will say they will help you you know, get the best result, but they are not prepared to spend three or four hundred thousand dollars, are they? We're prepared for that in every yeah. case, and people need to ask their lawyers, are you prepared to take yeah. three hundred fifty thousand dollars of your own money yeah. and put it in preparation for my case? Yeah. Um, you mentioned before the show that you come to Washington a lot, and you advocate against tired truckers, right, or any kind of safety feature which might be better on the road. How do you, do you do this uh, on a regular basis or how often do you do this? Um, I've come down probably half a dozen times. Um, since and you end up crash. speaking with the Secretary of Transportation, right? Uh, that's right. The, the Truck Safety Coalition um, sets an agenda and mm -hmm. um, I show up and I, c I will meet with congressmen, senators, um, the Secretary of Transportation mm -hmm. or the Deputy Secretaries. Um, we met with the Office of Management and Budget once, mm -hmm. um, and, and what we're trying to do is advocate for, for highway safety in general, but specifically truck safety, because um, when, you're in a, when you're in a conflict with an 80,000 pound missile traveling yeah. at 60 miles an hour, you lose. Yeah. Um, and there are a lot of safety measures that are in the law in other countries that just are not in our law and um, they need to be. Do you feel, you know, because you've been there and done this, do you feel that an everyday average citizen has effect? Are the legislators listening? Are the administrators listening? Do they listen to you? Um, um, I believe they listen. Um, I, I believe that uh, this transportation secretary is relatively responsive, um, and I think a lot of congressmen and senators are responsive. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult for safety advocates to go up against an industry mm -hmm. that can park their their lobbyists here in D.C. 24/7. Right. And the and we safety advocates use our own money to come here mm -hmm. whenever we can. Um, so. It's, it's not really a fair fight, but I, there are some things that have happened as a result of our lobbying that are making the road safer. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you very, very much for spending time with us today here in Washington. And thank you. You did a great job in the case, Jeff. Thank you. What are the changes that you want to see to improve truck driver fatigue? The biggest change that should be made, but we're a long way from it, is change away from the m method of compensation. Drive, most drivers are paid by the mile, so they have an incentive, an economic incentive, to drive further and faster than they should. So that's, that's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, in the Fair Labor Standards Act passed in 1938, trucking was exempted from paying overtime. So truck drivers have, truck companies have no incentive not to have their drivers just drive and drive and drive. They can drive 70 hours a week if, if they want to, 70 hours within their, their hours of service limit. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other things on a smaller scale that can be done, such as um, uh, fatigue management training and sleep apnea screening. A, a very large percentage of truck drivers suffer from some kind of sleep disorder, very commonly sleep apnea, which means that the sleep they get isn't good restorative sleep. Right. And I do want to emphasize again, your firm, even though it's based in Kansas City, represents clients in almost all states, 34 states, correct? We've had 34 states so far and just got our 35th, so. Yeah. One of the reasons we do these shows is because, is if you will see from the many shows that we have done, is the law firms that represent their clients not only care about their clients but as you mentioned earlier spend the time and the money to prosecute a case represent right to the fullest go to trial and get the best result possible right it takes a lot of resources to handle any one of these cases 
and there has to be a commitment on the part of uh, the firm as we do to invest those resources mm -hmm. in order to make changes. Uh, the things that Jeff talked about in terms of fatigue management all come from, like any other business, top down. Chief executives, ownership, and others have to make a decision that this is a priority and make it happen. Well, you guys are doing a tremendous job, and keep up the good work, and thank you very much for joining us on our show. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.